the Pixel 10 Pro Fold recently came out, and most people who have pre-ordered this probably got theirs by now. I've been using mine for a few weeks now, and after talking with some people, I've realized that there's a lot of features that not everyone will know about. From customizations to multitasking optimizations, and even hidden settings that are a bit hard to find. Because after all, the Pixel 10 Pro Fold is nearly a $2,000 device. So wouldn't you want to get the most out of it? So this isn't going to be a super flashy or fun video by any means, but I am going to try and cover off on a bunch of really helpful tips and tricks. So if you recently got this phone, you can definitely follow along and see what settings you can change. Or send this video to a friend who may be interested in this device. And if you want to learn more, check out the full in-depth review on my channel. Alright, let's get right into it. Alright, so first let's dive into some general settings that can help improve the overall user experience. Swiping down on your home screen, we can reveal some quick access icons in the notification tray. And if you swipe down again, you have this little pen icon where you can click on it and it allows you to customize the screen. So obviously if you hold down, click and drag, you can add or remove icons and reorder them around in this panel. But if you notice, there's actually a little handle that appears when you long press on an icon, which allows you to resize them. If they are full width, they reveal some additional information compared to if they're half width. So for example, if you wanna see when your next alarm is, a full width bar will show you that information. Since we're talking about notifications, another really useful setting is to enable notification history. So if you go into settings, notifications, and right here at the top, you have notification history. Enabling this will allow you to see a list of all of your recent notifications. So for example, if you're like me and accidentally swipe away notifications all the time, you can come to this screen and see what it was. Also within this notification settings is a toggle for notification snoozing. Just like alarms, this allows you to snooze a notification that you're not ready for currently, and it will reappear after a set amount of time. So in this example, we have this test notification and you can just snooze this for an hour and then it will reappear. Going down into this window gives you really useful privacy settings for your lock screen. So within these settings, I like to disable show sensitive content. This way, a stranger won't be able to see those notifications without unlocking your device. For example, an email or a text message. And lastly, if we go back, there is the setting called flash notifications. This allows your phone to use both the camera flash and the screen to flash when you get a notification. Now, personally, I don't really use this, but I know a lot of people find this helpful, so it's there if you need it. Next, we'll talk about some additional gestures that are a bit hidden. So back under the main settings, we have system settings right here. And within this menu, you can see we have the gestures tab. So right here at the top, we have quick tap, and this allows you to double tap the back of your device to trigger any number of actions. So for this one, I have a set to take a screenshot. You can also use it to turn on the flash or to launch an app. It is a bit tricky to use, but once you get used to it, it can become very helpful. If you find yourself triggering it accidentally, you can also enable require strong taps. Another really useful setting is the double press power button. So by default, it just launches the camera, but if you're coming from a different device that doesn't do that, you can also set it to open Google Wallet for mobile payments. Lastly, within this menu, flip to sh is also a really useful feature where you can just flip this phone onto its screen in order to turn on DND. &D. So this is really useful if you're running into a meeting or if you're trying to concentrate on something. You can just turn your phone over and it won't vibrate, it won't ring until you flip it back over. Under the main settings menu, let's check out sound and vibration. Scrolling down to vibration and haptics, you have this option for vibrate first, then ring gradually. This is totally personal preference, but I really like this option because I'd rather my phone vibrate first so I can pick it up instead of it blasting the ringtone right away. And then going back a page and scrolling all the way down, we have clear calling. Enabling this allows the phone to reduce background noises during a call. And this is another really useful feature that I just always leave enabled because I think it does a pretty good job. Speaking of calling settings, this would be a good time to check out some other settings from within the dialer. So when you're in the dialer on the left hand side, you can go into settings and right here, generally all of these settings under call assist, I just leave on because they are all honestly so useful. Obviously caller ID and spam is pretty straightforward. It just identifies spam calls, but I also like to enable scam detection. After downloading an AI model, the phone is able to detect if someone on the call is trying to scam you. 
Personally, I haven't seen this in action, but I'm really curious if any of you have used this, how well does it work? Direct My Call allows you to see different options on your phone screen. For example, if it says press one for English or press two for Spanish, those options appear on your screen and you can just tap on it. Now, call screen, of course, is one of the most notable features for Pixels because it's able to automatically screen your calls for you and reject spam calls. It seems like they're constantly updating and evolving this feature so you can even pick up phone calls with Assistant and AI and it allows you to save the audio as well as the transcripts from that. Now, voice to translate is new for the Pixel 10 devices and this allows you to translate phone calls in real time. In the demo they showed, this looked really cool, but again, I personally haven't had a chance to use it because the language selections are a bit limited. Magic Q is another new feature that they added this year, where the AI is able to pull up relevant information in your phone calls. For example, if someone is asking for a confirmation number or an order number, Magic Q should be able to help populate that within the dialer so you don't have to go digging around your emails for it. Lastly, take a message is a pretty underrated feature that allows you to see voicemails in real time as someone is leaving them. It shows up as a transcript and then you have the ability to pick up the call in the middle of the voicemail. Scrolling all the way down to contact ringtones, this allows you to customize ringtones per contact. So basically you can know who's calling you without ever having to take a look at your phone. All right, so now let's check out some home screen settings for customization. So on your home screen, by default, you have up to four apps. If you long press and go to wallpaper and style, at the very bottom, you have this layout option. From here, you can choose small layout and you're actually able to have an additional app slot for five of them on your home screen. I'm not gonna change it now because it does mess up the sizing of your widgets, but being able to have an extra app slot is really useful, especially if you want to leave that app slot blank. On Pixels, you are able to leave an app blank and it will automatically suggest apps for you. So in this example, I have three main apps and then my fourth one is blank. You can see it automatically populates with whatever the phone thinks will be useful. In this example, it's currently showing YouTube but it can change pretty often depending on how you use your device. I just had an email come in and after swiping it away, the app suggestion turned to Gmail. Although you're not able to have two separate home screens for the cover and inner displays, there are slight ways to still optimize this setup. So when your device is open, you can see two home pages at once. Basically, this is just my first home page on the left and my second home page on the right. Having this layout makes the most sense to me because when I'm using my phone folded, I don't need to look at my second homepage. Everything I need is pretty much here already. But when I unfold my device, my second homepage on the right has a couple of my most used app pairs that can quickly launch to enter multitasking mode. So a hidden tip is that when you unfold your device, you actually get one more additional app slot on the bottom. So in this case, I like to add another app pair because I only see this when it's unfolded. So for example, when the phone is closed, I only have four icons, but when I open it, that additional app icon is available. And in this case, it's Instagram and TikTok for ultimate doom scrolling. Oh, and here's another tip that really isn't specific to pixels, but instead of pinning apps like Snapchat, you can instead pin a quick action shortcut for that app. So as you can see, I can pin the chats directly to my home screen. So this way, when I'm logged in and I can click on it, the shortcut will bypass the camera portion of Snapchat and take me directly into my messages. All right, now let's move into some multitasking features. Because this is a foldable device, these are really important to know. There's a few ways that you can run apps side by side. So the first way is just long press on any app from your app drawer and hit the split screen option. Then you can just choose a second app and you're able to run them side by side. Or if you already have an app open, like Instagram, just swipe up and hold halfway from the bottom to reveal this taskbar. From here, you can hold and drag any app to open it in split screen. Oh, and one more hidden tip, if you want to keep this taskbar on your screen at all times, just long press on this divider bar and you have this toggle to always show the taskbar. And one more way to open split screen apps is if you have a notification, you can hold it and directly drag it onto your screen to open that in split screen. Now, once you have two apps open, you can easily resize them by just dragging this middle divider bar. And then if you double tap on it, it quickly switches the position of the two apps. 
Another multitasking feature is if you drag the slider nearly all the way to the edge, you get this secondary mode where you can quickly swap between these two apps just by tapping on the side of the screen. Unfortunately for multitasking, you can't fit more than two apps at a time. Like you can't have a third app and you can't have floating windows on top. Although it is still pretty limited to just two apps, this is still so much better than trying to multitask on a small cover display. Oh, and before I showed you guys the app pairs, but in order to save an app pair, you just have to have two apps open, whichever ones you want. And then within the recents menu, click on this dropdown and there's an option to save as app pair. As far as this recents panel goes, there are a few other tips and tricks as well. So you can actually select and copy both text and images straight from this recents panel from any app. So if I want to select some text from an image or from an email, I can do so without going back into that app. And the same thing goes for images where if you hold down on it, you can copy it straight to your clipboard. Okay, so now let's move on to some keyboard settings. When the device is closed, you can tap on these four squares on the top left of the keyboard to pull up a menu of options. Within this menu, you have the settings for the entire keyboard. And I'm not gonna go over every single one, but under preferences, you are able to turn on a dedicated number row. I feel like the screen is definitely big enough where you can always have that enabled and it just makes typing a lot quicker. Under voice typing, you have the ability to enable faster voice typing, as well as some advanced features. And if you guys haven't tried this already, dictation on Pixel phones are pretty much the best of any device. They're really smart about adding punctuation automatically and knowing if something is a statement or a question. You don't have to say things like add a period at the end of the sentence. Lastly, what seems to be new this year is the ability to edit and rewrite phrases by just using your voice. So this is a list of voice commands that you can say. For example, make it professional, make it friendly, and then AI will help rewrite the sentence for you. So going back to using the keyboard, when your phone is closed, the keyboard looks pretty standard, but when you open it up, I have it so it splits into two. Now, if you don't like this setup, there are a few different ways to adjust this. So tapping on that middle icon will then condense it into one large keyboard across the whole screen. Or you can even tap on this icon and it becomes a floating keyboard. This is great for one-handed use. Tapping on the four squares and then going into resize will allow you to resize this floating keyboard so that it's more comfortable for your use case. You can also control where the cursor is using the spacebar just by swiping on it. You can see it's able to move around letter by letter and the same thing applies for backspace. So if you hold down and swipe on the backspace key, you can actually delete multiple words and sentences at a time. This makes typing and navigating long documents a lot quicker. All right, lastly, I just wanna to touch on some circle to search functions. So if you hold down on the home bar, it pulls up the general circle to search UI. From here, you can scan QR codes right from your screen, and you can also search images, which I'm sure everyone already knows how to do. But within this UI, you can also just translate anything on your screen by tapping this translate icon. And it's a bit hard to see, but you can also copy the text straight from here. So from an image or anything that's on your screen. And right next to the translate is a music icon. So if you tap on that, it also allows you to identify songs from music or if you even want to hum a melody. All right, so I know that was a ton of information, but hopefully you guys learned something new. And if you are interested in how I set up my home screen, I did have a home screen segment on my full review video. And if you have any questions or if I forgot about anything, just let me know in the comments below and I'll try to reply. If you found this helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you want to support me. It's free and it means a lot. That's pretty much it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace.